Utini arthroplasty and perineal nerve palsy. We should be counseling the patient preoperatively regarding the risk of totony arthroplasty. The patient should be informed that there are higher risk of perineal nerve palsy in patient with valgus than the typical patient. Perineal nerve palsy can occur in patients with a large valgus deformity and flexion contracture. The common perineal nerve is one of the terminal branches of the sciatic nerve that innervates the lower extremity. The common perineal nerve has two parts, the deep perineal nerve and the superficial perineal nerve, as you can see here in this diagram. The main muscles innervated by the superficial perineal nerve is the perineus longus and perineus bravus. The main function of these muscles is eversion of the foot. The main muscles supplied by the deep perineal nerve are tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus. The function of these muscles is dorsiflexion of the ankle and toes. The perineal nerve is tethered at the fibular head and correction of the valgus deformity and the flexion contracture at the time of a total knee arthroplasty can stretch the nerve and can lead to perineal nerve palsy. Combination of flexion and valgus deformity preoperatively most frequently associated with postoperative perineal nerve palsy. So that common perineal nerve injury predominantly affects the patient that has lateral compartment arthritis. If the patient has a preoperative varus knee, but the patient was unable to extend his toes or dorsiflex or evert the ankle postoperatively, then this perineal nerve injury probably occurs from bad placement of the retractors during surgery. And if you have an indwelling femoral nerve catheter for postoperative pain, postoperatively, the patient is unable to dorsiflex the toes or the ankle and decrease sensation of the first web space. This clinical picture is not from the femoral nerve block or from the catheter. A presentation of perineal nerve palsy usually occurs acutely after surgery, but it may be delayed. Residual weakness of the extensor hallucis longus is the most common long-term complication following total knee replacement when the perineal nerve was injured. What other risk factors of perineal nerve palsy? The use of epidural anesthesia, previous spinal surgery, and that will be a double crush, one from the spine and one from the perineal nerve around the knee, patients with peripheral neuropathy, and patients with high tibial osteotomy. Examine the patient and distinguish between partial or complete perineal palsy. Preservation of function of the perineus longus and perineus bravus will indicate partial injury. The deep perineal nerve is the only one that's affected. The superficial perineal nerve is not affected. So what do you do if you find there is a perineal nerve palsy? You remove the dressing to release any compressive dressing and then flex the knee. You will give the patient a foot drop brace. You will get an EMG in about three to four weeks. You will give the patient physiotherapy. You will try to avoid equinus contracture. And if there is no improvement in three months, then explore and decompress the nerve. When you explore the nerve, the nerve and all its branches may need to be released. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.